For this video, we're going to be looking at showing one value as a percentage of another. Here is a summary of what we're going to be looking at, but we'll go through this in a bit more detail. So here is an example of what we'd like to do. First, we need to know what the values are that we're looking at. We need to know what two quantities they are, being the one that we're interested in, that's showing that as a percentage of, and the total amount. So this example says, in an archery competition, Alice takes 25 shots and hits the target 18 times. What was Alice's accuracy hitting the target? So we're looking for what percentage of times out of the total she had did she hit the target, her accuracy. So the general uh, rule is the amount that we are interested in showing over or as a fraction of the total amount possible. So in our case, that is the shots that hit the target over the total number of shots that were taken. And so if we look at the actual numbers that were provided here, the shots that hit the target was 18 and the total number of shots taken was 25. So as a fraction, we can say her accuracy was 18 out of or over 25 shots. So we're showing this so far as a fraction. Now let's have a look at how we can compare our different things with percentages. So when we want to compare uh, things, different things together, especially uh, when they are different whole amounts, it's really useful to show them as a percentage because it's really easy then to compare. Uh, and in most cases, when you want to compare things, you want them to have the same type. So if you compare apples and apples and oranges and oranges, so when they're both percentages, it just makes it much easier to compare. And the fact that we have a, a common of 100, so 1 out of 100 being 1%, makes that really easy. So let's take our example from before. We worked out earlier that 18 over 25 was Alice's accuracy as a fraction. 18 times she hit the target out of 25 times in total. So if we want to turn that now into a percentage, the first thing we're going to want to do is have our denominator be 100. So how can we take our denominator of 25 and turn that into 100? Well, we're going to multiply that by 4. So here we're just doing our fraction work that we have learned earlier. If we multiply our denominator by 4, we have to, of course, multiply the numerator, which now gives us a value of 72. So when we now have this fraction of 72 over 100, of course, we can very easily turn that into a percentage by simply taking our numerator of 72, uh, taking away the fraction part and just putting the percentage at the end. So we have it being equal to 72%. So we can say now that her accuracy of hitting the target was 72%. Now along comes Martin. He also takes 10 shots at the target and hits it seven times. We need to find out what his accuracy was at hitting the target. So we can compare the two to find out who was more accurate. Now you might look at it initially and go, well, Alice must be more accurate because she hit 18 times out of 25 and he only hit a seven. But again, we're looking for accuracy of amount of times that they took their shots, not who hit it more times, but who was more accurate, which percentage was higher. So we're going to do the same process here for, for Martin. So we have 7 over 10 for his um, fractional representation, 7 shots being the number we're interested in, and 10 shots being the total amount that he took. Again, we would like to get a denominator of 100 to turn this into a percentage eventually. So how do we take the denominator of 10 and turn it into 100? Again, we multiply by 10. So we'll do the same to the numerator, which gives us a value of 70 over 100. And of course, as a percentage, that becomes 70%. So we can clearly see now that Alice's accuracy of 72% is better than uh, Martin's accuracy of 70. The 72 is bigger than 70. Not by a lot, but it is certainly better. So her, her accuracy is much better uh, as a percentage. Here's a couple of other examples of doing this. So let's write 12 out of 40 as a percentage. So we start first of all by deciding which values are which. So 12 is the uh, quantity that we want to look at and 40 is the whole amount, 12 out of the 40. So let's start with our idea of the quantity over the whole, which in this case will now be 12 
over 40. Usually the next step is we want to turn our denominator into 100, but we're looking at this 40 and going, how can we turn that into 100? Now, some of you might be going, yeah, we can multiply it by 2.5 and that would be correct, but let's try and keep it with simpler numbers. So multiplying a, a fraction by a, a, a cent, uh, sorry, a, um, a decimal is possible, of course, we know how to do that, but let's keep it a bit easier. So let's start by bringing that 40 to something that we can easily work with to get to 100. And I can see that if I divide 40 by four, I'm gonna get the value 10. And I can easily take 10 then to be 100 simply. So let's do that. So we're gonna to divide to get a denominator of 10 to begin with. So divide by four at the bottom, divide by four at the top will give me a value of three over 10. Now remember these are equivalent fractions. So from early we learned about this. So three over 10 is the same as 12 over 40. And of course, now that I've got a 10 on the bottom as our denominator, I can easily turn that into 100 by multiplying by 10, do the same to the top, and there we go, we have 30 over 100. And if you were to do that with your calculator and multiply them by 2.5, of course, you'll end up at the same point. Um, but without a calculator, calculator, at least, this is certainly an easier step. Get it into some multiple of 10 first, and then we can easily get to 100. And of course, now that we do have a denominator of 100, we can turn that into a percentage very easily, 30%. Let's have another look at another one. There are 11 boys and 14 girls in the class. What percentage of the class are boys? Now, there's one more step to this question that we might have to do. And that is, first of all, think about the total number. So a whole number of students, in this case, is 11 boys and 14 girls. So the whole class is made up of both the boys and the girls, which gives us a value of 25. Our quantity that we want to look at in this case is the number of boys, which is 11. So of course, let's express this as a percentage, sorry, as a fraction first, so quantity over whole. So the quantity we want is 11, the number of boys, and the whole is the whole class, which is the boys and girls, which is 25. Again, we'd like to get this fraction to have a denominator, denominator sorry, of 100. So how do we get 25 to be 100? We multiply by four, do the same to the top, and we end up with 44 over 100. And of course, now that we have it in that form, it is very easy to change that to be a percentage, which is of course equal to 44%. Now, there is one more thing we want to look at, and that is how do we work with uh, values of different units? And what exactly do I mean by that? So here is an uh, example. We want to say, what is 24 centimeters as a percentage of two meters? So our first value is in centimeters, and our second value is in meters, and we can't easily work with those. So we need to convert uh, the values to be the same unit of measurement in this case. So the easiest one here would be to convert uh, meters into centimeters. And we know that 24 centimeters, sorry, that one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. So we can easily turn our um, two meters into centimeters by simply multiplying two times 100 to give us 200 centimeters. So we end up now with a, um, uh, an ability to show this as a, a fraction, which then converts into a percentage. So again, quantity over the whole. Our quantity that we're looking at is the 24 centimeters. So that's the one part we want to show as a percentage of. And our total now, our whole, is the 200 centimeters. And that's why we had to convert before. So we now have 24 over 200. As always, we want our denominator to, to be 100 though. So how do we take 200 to be 100? Well, we divide by two, so do the same to the top, which gives us 12 over 100. So now I turn that into our percentage easily as 12%. So the important part here was that we couldn't just do 24 over two because the two was in meters, it was a different unit. We had to convert them to be the same. In a lot of cases, in most cases, in fact, you'll probably convert um, the denominator in this case, but there might be times where you might convert your quantity or number at the top. Look for which one's going to be easier, which one will be an easier number to convert for you. And let's do one more example of that. So what percentage of two hours is 48 minutes? 
So what are we looking at? The quantity is 48 minutes and the whole is two hours. They're not the same unit of measurement here. Uh, so we've got minutes and we've got hours. So what do we know? Well, we know that one hour is equal to 60 minutes. So we can change our two hours of um, time into a whole of two times 60 being 120 minutes. So now we have a quantity of 48 and a whole of 120. So let's turn that into our fraction now. So we have 48 over 120. So again, this is a little bit like one earlier where we want to maybe do a couple of steps to get our denominator of 100. So I'm looking at this first and go, what can I do to both the top and the bottom that's going to bring me to some multiple of 10 that I'm going to easily be able to get to 100 later on. And I can see that if I divide the top and the bottom by uh, 12, I'm going to get um, the value of 10 at the bottom. So 120 divided by 12 will give me 10, and I know I can turn that 10 into 100 easily. So 48 divided by 12 also works and gives me the value of 4. So we've got that step in between to try and get it to values that are easier for us to use. So now to turn the 10 into 100, we multiply that by 10 again and do the same to the top, and we end up with 40 over 100. And of course, that can now easily be turned into a percentage because we have a denominator of 100. So we end up with a simple percentage of 40%. So that question there is kind of the culmination, if you like, of what we're doing here. We have fractional work, we have changing values, um, and of course, we have our conversions to percentages. So if you've understood to this point, then you should have no problems moving on. Um, if any part of this has been complicated for you, of course, go back and watch that section again. And if need be, come and ask for some assistance.